Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness to examine their scriptures every day to see if these things were so. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. Oh my soul, let us protect our church. Oh my soul, let us protect our church. Oh my soul, let us protect our church. God, who is full of grace, on this holy Lord's Day in which you have permitted us and commanded us to come to, we have received your love, and as your church we have come before you. We rely on your Holy Spirit, and we rely on your Holy Spirit to give you the worship, and we thank you for it. We pray that we as the church become one, and we, as your church, we pray that we may be worthy of you to receive your grace. We pray we may succeed in this worship. We pray that all your, all your will and all your plans may succeed against all the works that the enemy is trying to do against us. We pray that your power and love be 
within us into the fullness in this church. We pray that we may succeed in this worship with great joy in the name of Jesus Christ. We only pray to you. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. During this time, a time that is uh, unlike any other time in this worship, that we must be humble before God when we pray to God in repentance. Let us all confess ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us cleanse ourselves of all our sins in this time of repentance to God. Let us pray together to the Lord. 
복으로 우리 하나님의 모든 의의로 우리 하나님의 모든 최고의 것으로 우리 하나님 자체로 우리 살기 원합니다 우리 심령을 모든 연약한 것을 제하여 주십시고 또 지난 한 해, 지난 한한주 동안에 우리 영혼이 하나님을 떠난 모든 순간들을 하나님 제하여 주십시고 하나님 기억지 마시고 주 예수의 모든 공로를 보시고 우리를 받아주시고 또 우리 주 예수여 우리를 용서해 주십시고 우리를 받아주시길 간절히 원합니다 우리 성도들의 영혼이 강건케 하시옵시고 주님의 모든 것으로 인하 깨끗게 하시옵소서 우리 하나님의 것이고 우리 주님의 것입니다 우리 모든 심령을 받아주십시고 주님 것으로 모두 대신해 주시기되 저들의 영혼 또 우리 모든 영혼을 하나님 받아주셔서 용기를 주십시오 온전히 하나님 것으로 살고 우리 하나님 것으로 굳게 서도록 역사하시고 도와주십시오 신겹지 아니하고 우리 주님의 간, 다, 강건하고 또 담대함과 모든 의름으로 앞으로 나올 수 있도록 하나님 도와주셔서 모든 죄를 근절시키시 모든 죄를 다 빼주시옵시고 모든 연약함을 가져가 주시옵시고 모든 시험되는 심령을 가져가 주시옵시고 모든 우리 영혼 속에 하나님이 아닌 모든 것을 버리기, 버리길 원하며 하나님께 나가길 원하니 우리를 모두 받아 주시옵시고 우리 심령을 주님의 그 모든 위대하시고 거룩하시고 참으로 이루신 것으로 다 대신하여 주시옵소서 연약하고 힘을 힘이 없고 실망한 심령들 위로해 주시사 하나님의 힘으로 달려가고 다시 일어날 수 있도록 도와주시고 우리 모두를 주께서 인도하시고 도와주시옵소서 예수 이름 받도로 회개 기도 드리옵나이다 아멘 Holy and living God the Father, we seek to give you the worship that you seek, and we seek to give you a most worthy worship. We pray that we all may be anointed with your Holy Spirit and power 
We pray for the sake of the senior overseer, Pastor Kidong Kim, that he may preach the will of God and that we all may fulfill it. We pray for the sake of the overseer, Pastor Sung Young Kim, that, that in the fulfillment of this will will not come with any hindrance. We give you thanks that we have all come here to worship you. We pray that none of us will fall to the floor in all of our prayers and works of service. We pray, we pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us may come to its full effect. We pray that none of our efforts, none of our efforts or our labor may come to nothing. We pray that in faith we may come together and we come to you. We pray we may show you our most mature faith. And we pray that as valiant, valiant uh, people, we may come to protect this church. We give you thanks during this time. And although that we, have may, we may have suffered greatly during this time, we pray we may seek you end and end. We pray that on this Holy Lord's Day, that we may come to consider how wonderful your great goodness and gifts and grace that you have given us. We pray for the upcoming uh, special healing crusade and, and the assembly for the growth of pastors uh, that will come up soon. We pray that you'd work most powerfully during these special times. We pray we may strive constantly to meet together to worship you. We pray we may praise you. We pray we may glorify you and honor you during this time of holy worship. We pray for the sake of the senior overseer who testifies to your word. We pray that you fill the senior overseer and the overseer with the fullness of the Holy Spirit to do your works. We, we pray that we may give you thanks. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Songyachuman, 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 Songyachuman. 할렐루야 Let us all encourage each other that we protect the church. Let us all protect the church. Holy God the Father, on this Holy Lord's Day, we, we, give you, we pray that you would uh, bless and remember those souls who have uh, given their thanks offerings to you. They have done these out of thanks for you. We pray that you would help them and be with them. We pray for those souls, those precious souls who have given their holy tithe offerings to you. They have offered these things uh, from what they own. We pray that you'd support them by your great blessings. We pray for those who have given their holy monthly offerings to you, their regular offerings. They have done these things for the sake of building up the holy body of the Lord. We, we pray that in faith and in your powerful blessings, you would support them and help them. We pray that you'd be with them. And to those who have given their thanks offerings to you, they have done these out of thanks. We honestly ask that you would help them. And they have done these things because they recognize you and acknowledge you. We pray that all these families, those souls and the souls of their families, may fulfill all your good plans by your great power. We pray that you take a hold of all those souls that have done these things. We pray that you lead them and guide them by your great power which you give them for their support. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. May God, uh, may God bless all those who out of thanksgiving and devotion have given, given themselves to the Lord in this way. In the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Hallelujah.
Songjugam. The Pine Bamboo Walk Address. If anyone gives his life for mere religion, he is doing it out of his own ideas and conviction. This has nothing to do with God. In this present world, some people are martyred for their country and some are martyred for their religion. But what God earnestly desires of us is that we die for Him. Enduring deception and enticements will sanctify one's life of faith. The enemy never rests in trying to tempt, oppress and deceive us. He tries to prevent us from becoming true martyrs. He does this by making us cowardly, unwilling to give offerings and making us lazy. A true martyr is the one who is humble before the name of Jesus. The hypocrite does not do this. On the contrary, he is proud before the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the name of God. This pride refers to the one who boasts of his own righteousness, his own man-made philosophy and his own academic learning. Such a person does not know the grace of God. He refuses to declare it, lest his own righteousness is in any, de in any degree diminished. What I, Shimwan, am constantly thankful for is that I have nothing in this world to boast about. I am thankful for this. I say this in full sincerity. I am blessed in my faith. Even if I am alienated in this world, I have faith that I will be raised up most high in heaven. Before the presence of all my enemies, I give glory to God, who will finally give me my reward. My personal prayer is that all of the people of Sangma Church work in greater zeal than they are doing now. I pray that they may strive even harder towards the rebuilding of the church. If we do this, if we push forward towards that day, and if we join together to diligently endure the pains of childbirth, then this church will be the body that fulfills the will of God on earth. It will be the church that returns to the world in great victory. This is my honest prayer. Shimoni the Word of God is found in Acts chapter 7 verse 54 to Acts chapter 8 verse 1. 하나님의 말씀 사도행전 7장 54절로 let us all read together. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep, and Saul was there, giving approval to his death. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church of Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. So that we can hear the word of God, let us honestly pray to God right now.
성의 감동하심으로 말미암아 하나님의 말씀을 들을 수 있도록 정말 말씀을 받을 수 있는 능력을 하나님 허락해 주시고 환경을 허락해 주시고 또 우리 육신을 지배해 주시길 간절히 바랍니다 말씀을 전하는 주의 종을 도우사 하나님의 신뢰와 말씀을 전파하기에 정말 뭐 어떤 또이 힘들지 않도록 하나님의 육신을 도우시고 또한 영감이 부족하지 않도록 하나님의 놀라운 능력으로 지원하시고 도와주시옵소서 하나님 아버지 Holy God the Father On this holy day Which you have commanded us As blessing We thank you that you have called us We pray We thank you that we have come here To receive your great love We pray that you'd open All of our spirits So that we have The heart to hear the word That you speak by the Holy Spirit In the name of Jesus Christ We pray, Amen God and the Son of Man. Let's all read together the sermon outline. God is one. The Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are three persons in one God. He is the one and only God. The one who had appeared to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob was not the only God, but the angel of God. He is the angel of the Lord. The one who appeared to Israel was an angel. The angel appeared in the flames of a bush. He is the representative angel who came in the name of Jehovah. This angel gave the law and his commandments to Israel. This angel led Israel through Samaria and up to Jerusalem. This is the angel of the Lord. At last, the Son of God came into the world as the Son of Man. He is the image of God's being. He was given the name Jesus. This name means that he will save his people from their sins. The name of Jesus is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We too have seen God, and we have heard his name. God has given us his name as our inheritance. We have received baptism by immersion in the name of Jesus. We have all now become his possession. The man of the Holy Spirit is the witness of Jesus. A witness has now staked his life through baptism by immersion. We have come out of the name of Jehovah. We have come into the name of Jesus. Only the name of Jesus can save you from sins. This name transfers you from death over to life. We must be courageous witnesses like Stephen. Though we may be stoned by those who belong to the law, God himself will receive glory. Amen. God is one. After we have become Christians, the first word that we hear the first teaching that we hear is the teaching about the Trinity. You must know what the Trinity is. And if you stop and take a look, you may question how, how, how can this Trinity be and what precisely is this Trinity? Uh, we, we can have these questions but if you do not know it properly, you will fail in your faith. You must consider how um, terrible it is, how troublesome it is, if you do not know what the Trinity is. Trinity, the Trinity is, is the real, is the real being whom we believe in. He is the true being who we believe and we hold to. We must know and we must believe in who the Trinity is. Otherwise, you will not have a perfected faith. What God had sent to us, was that he had, he had come to us and he, revealed, and he had revealed himself and starting from Moses until the day of John the Baptist the name of God was Jehovah 
It was known as Jehovah. And so the God that revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when he had revealed himself, he had spoken words to Abraham. And while and after the days of Abraham came, uh, came the days when God protected Isaac. And after the days of Isaac, God protected Jacob. Yet even until this time, God had not revealed his name. His name in truth. Nobody had known the name of God. And, and during the days of Moses, God had not yet revealed his name to 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 any man and it was and it was only during the days of Moses after Abraham Isaac and Jacob that he had revealed his name and so the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob this is known he is known as the God of Israel officially and yet John chapter 1 says no one has seen God and yet it is written in the Old Testament that God that Abraham had seen God that Elijah had seen God that Moses had seen God yes Moses it is written in the Bible that Moses saw God and yet it says in John chapter 1 that no one has seen God and and it is written in the book of John that no one had seen God until the coming of Jesus and and we as Christians are the ones that have seen God we have seen God for, for real and some Christians if they do not know what these mean in the Bible they will get confused and so there are many expressions in the Bible that are saying that are saying talking about the concepts of God, God's spirits. And so what what um, the Bible was written in the language of Aramaic. This is the most ancient language of the Bible. And it states in this Aramaic language, the God that we believe in is Elohim. Elohim, which means Lord or Master. So yet even angels are referred to as Elohim. And even demons are referred to as Elohim. And even the spirits of man are referred to Elohim. These all refer to gods with a lowercase g. These all refer to gods with a lowercase g. And so you may, you may understand this in more detail in the English language. And yet, and yet uh, these concepts are all very confusing. And when the American, when the U.S., missionaries came to Korea, they had to deal with this problem. And they had to deal with uh, linguistic problems, translation problems. And when the, Amer when the U.S. missionaries had come to Korea, they had to, they had to deal with the ideas of eat, of about eating bread and uh, and in the original language eating bread sounds like eating a boat it sounds the same in the korean language the word for boat and the word for bread and and the native koreans when they heard this they were very confused and so we are led to rely on to the context the portion of the the portion of the writing right before and the portion of writing right after so that we understand what the true meaning of what the actual thing the actual portion of scripture is trying to say you must know the contextual meaning and then you will know what it is actually trying to say so it is and so you know that it is actually talking about for example god the father 
And so you know that this or that is talking about a demon or this or that is talking about an angel, this or that is talking about uh, the one God. And, and so this is what that it had to be done in the Hebrew language itself. And so there was great confusion. And what the U.S. missionaries had uh, had to deal with and what they thought is that they said that they had, although they had, they had dwelt, although they had dwelt in the land of Korea and similar areas for a long time, yet they, they would comment that they were very confused about words that sounded the same and yet had a completely different meaning. And yet the word that stood for mother or mother-in-law or, or maybe husband or wife, they had different meanings. And so one person was considered as the wife and then there was another person uh, completely unrelated that was also considered uh, with the word that also meant wife. And so it's very confusing. There was the same word that had very different meanings. And so, if we look at the collective Korean language and all those and all those um, uh, accepted books that represent the Korean language, you will see that there is about roughly a few, a few. Um, um, 15,000 15, 15, 15, prof, pro, uh, proper technical words that represent the Korean language. There were many words uh, found in the Korean language. I myself am a man of letters. I write, I write many books and a person like me who, who, um, who writes letters, who writes many books, I, I read a lot of books and I write a lot of books. For me, I I use about eight, a maximum of about eight thousand words. I would like to estimate, and so and so as I have calculated myself um, uh, these days, I use around a range of probably eight thousand words. And for most people, most normal people, they don't use any any to this range, anything close to this range. They only use very simple words like, have you had breakfast? Have you had your meal today? Or have you gotten up in the morning well? So very simple words. And this is all that most people people use. They don't use any technical or difficult words. And so although there are many also, there are many l words in the Korean language, only a limited range of words are used. And only a minimum of range of words are used to, su to successfully and appropriately convey language. And yet the, the language found in the Bible is also very complicated. But it is through the Holy Spirit that the Word of God is communicated. It is through the Holy Spirit that one understands properly the Word of God. In the same way, the, the, the language found in the Bible, biblical language, the language itself, the technical language itself is very limited. It has restraints. And many uh, pronunciations and interpretations of a particular word can be vastly different. And yet, our faith is our faith is specific. So, when we talk about the Trinity, the Triune God, you must you must absolutely know the definition of the Trinity. You must know it fully and properly. If you do not, you will be short of your salvation. And we, you and I, have we have all heard the word about the Trinity. We have all heard messages about the, the Trinity. And yet, many people do not understand, they don't have sufficient information and knowledge about the Trinity. And so when the pastor gives his invocation, um, they, and yet although the, the invocation, the blessing is spoken, many are vastly short of the knowledge of the Trinity. 
And so, and so the knowledge of God, the son, the knowledge of God came from the time of Moses up to the time of John the Baptist. And the people of Israel had known, had known God, in the way that they were, it was conveyed to them, um, from since Moses to John the Baptist, and this was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what God had pronounced, He had said, uh, "My name is Jehovah. This is, this is the name. This is my representative name." the name which, the specific name which I am supposed to be remembered from eternity to eternity. This is only the, the remain, this is only the name that I am supposed to be remembered, remembered by you. And, and this, and this, and this manifestation and representation of God came in the form of the burning bush in the Old Testament. And even Stephen, the martyr Stephen, would uh, testify and teach uh, the Sanhedrin, the elders of Israel, concerning this. And he would talk and he would explain about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he would say, is this not the God that you have known and believed in? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob only. Yet the God that we believe and we know he, look, he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And Stephen testified to him. And once um, Stephen had testified to the truth, the elders of Israel, once they had heard this testimony, they were furious and they greatly seek to persecute him. And yet Paul, as a Pharisee, as a strict teacher of the law, and um, I've had, a, and he had great learning of the law. He had, in the same way as these elders, he had known only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And and yet Stephen came along, and he spoke and testified concerning a God that we had no knowledge of. They had not known this God that Stephen was uh, was testifying to. And once, once they heard all the el all the elders of Israel had stoned, had stoned, had stoned our Stephen, and yet Paul and yet Saul at this time, he he was a teacher of the law, the God of the law, and then Saul and then Saul, he was protecting the clothes, he was protecting the goals of those. The, the clothes of those who were steving, who were um, stoning Stephen at that time, and in protecting, and in protecting the clothes of those who were stoning Stephen, he was giving a uh, public action that he was witnessing to the stoning of Stephen. He was making an action that he was witnessing to it, and yet, why, why were they steving? They were, why were they stoning Stephen? He had performed great power and signs. This is what Stephen had done. And, and uh, Stephen had, had spoken of these things and why had they opposed him and stoned Stephen in such a violent way? What did Stephen do? He had given his life. He had given his life to testifying to the true God. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, did they know the true God, the only true God? No. They had known only that God was living. This is all that they know. They only know that God was living, the one God was living. Only Jacob had known that the living God was alive and that he had come to them. And yet the one who had honestly sought to know God was Jacob. And Jacob had asked God, had asked, uh, not God, they had asked, uh, asked the man who had wrestled with him, what is your name? And that being had refused to give that name. And, and that being, that spiritual being had replied, why do you ask for the name? For the name of, for the name. 
Yet sure, you have won this wrestle. You have won this small wrestling match. And yet he had won the battle against not another true God, but the God that had represented himself and came to him, to Jacob. And 400 years later, finally, God, the God that had revealed himself to Israel, he had pronounced this representative name, and this name was Jehovah. This name that was proclaimed at the time to Moses was Jehovah, the angel of the Lord. And so the whole history of the of the time of the Old Testament was the was the history of the work of the angel of Jehovah. And this name of Jehovah was this name this angel this this name of Jehovah was the name that that God had revealed himself and represented it himself. This was the name that was given to the angel of the Lord. And for for so many for several hundreds of years the angel of the angel of Jehovah had done works in this name of Jehovah. And yet it was expressly declared by Stephen that the angel or the name of that the name of Jehovah was the representative name. It was only the name that was represented represented by God. And yet those who don't know this and those who follow their own ideas and convictions, they change the name because they do not have the proper knowledge of God end on end. They do not know the proper name of God. And they think that the name of Jesus is only the name of the Son. But this is the name of God. And even in legal and eager, even in legal matters, in legal and legal processes, you cannot you cannot formally establish an affair or an issue unless somebody's name has been given and somebody's and a, and a particular name has been set forth, put forth. And yet several thousands of years later they are still misunderstanding the true name of God. And Stephen came along so that he may teach, he may teach in truth about the true name of God and that, and that the name of Jehovah was only the sign that was to be remembered, that was to be remembered and, and that was a representative name. And so in the name of Jehovah, God had given, God had spoken the commandments. God had given the commandments and given the law of Moses. So the God, the, the law, the law was given, the law was given and the commandments were given only to, to the, the people of Israel through the angel that had represented it himself and his own name uh, to the people of Israel, and this was given. Uh, this was given exclusively to the people of Israel. And yet, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus by which the true God would come, He had come in this name of Jesus, and He had come to us. And once this name of Jesus had come, the name of Je the name of Jehovah was now over. It was seen to disappear. And so a, a little child, a little child that still is under the breast of the mother and still feeds on this mother's milk. And so uh, let us uh, think about that. And in the same way the, the child of a mother would still remain under the, the breast milk of his mother. During this time, he would still be fed, he would still be disciplined by the mother. He could not do whatever he wanted. He was restricted and disciplined by the mother. He cannot do whatever he wants. He must remain under the protection and love and, and uh, giving of the mother. 
And yet, and so when he who is the heir was still still under under um under the nurturing of the mother later he would grow up and yet still people are still still holding on to that which was ended several thousands of years ago once the air was fully grown once the air was fully grown one no longer needs to be a slave one no longer needs to be in bondage and yet and yet this was all clear this was all this is all uh, publicly spoken as recorded in the Old Testament and it was written in the Bible that the law was only in place until he um, to who the um, the inheritance of God uh, referred to only until he comes would the the law of Moses still stay in effect and then once Jesus had come, once the heir of God had come, the Old Testament would would be void of effect. It would have no power. Its effect would end. And Jesus, he didn't come only to the people of Israel. He had come to the whole world. And people, the people of the world, they would only know that the name of God is the name of Jehovah. And the name of Jesus was given and proclaimed to all those who would hear and believe in him. And so when Jesus was born, he was commanded as through the instructions given by the angel that, uh, that he was to be named Jesus because the name means that he would save his people from their sins. And so Moses... And Moses had given the law to those people of Israel, and it related only to them. And yet the name of Jesus had come all, to all mankind, to all those who are on the earth. And so, and so the angel of Jehovah had manifested himself, had manifested himself through the angel of Jehovah to the people of Israel. And all the people of and all the peoples on the earth would be saved through the name of Jesus, having received the name of Jesus. And they would thus be raised up in their faith. You cannot take your relatives and your close friends back to heaven once you pass away. You cannot take your possessions and your clothing with you on the day of the resurrection on the day of the resurrection. That is why one who does so will be, will be considered as those who have no power. Although the law had some regulations and instructions for the disciplining of the flesh, there is no salvation of souls by the name of Jehovah. There is no giving of life in the name of Jehovah. And yet the name of Jesus was given to all mankind, to all peoples on the earth. It was given to every nation on, under the heavens. And it is the name by which you are saved of your sins. You are saved from the, from the works of the enemy. You are saved from difficulties on this earth. You are saved from the flesh. You are saved by grace. This is the most wonderful and amazing name so the people on this earth and so even the pastors of the church they would come and they would pray they would pray before the church and they would say they would call out in the name of Jehovah they would sometimes call the name of Jesus they would go on and on and they would be confused about what the name of Jehovah is and so the name of Jehovah is not the name of the, the, the God, the Trinity. 
This is only the name given to the angel. There was no one under the law that was given the authority to, be, to call God Father and to become a child of God. There was no one that had heard the true name by which one could be able to do this. There was no one who had seen God with their own eyes and heard of, it, heard of Him by their own ears. No angel had spoken of this name or had spoken of this authority. The angels are only those who do the works, uh, they do the works and tasks instructed by the angel. And they were seen, and the angels were seen as those servants who had served and ministered to God. The name of Jehovah was not given to the name of the triune God. And the one that we believe in is the triune God. What is the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus. And so, 1, 17, chapter 17, verse 17 states, the name of Jesus is the name of God, and he had given it to the Son as an inheritance. This is what's written in John chapter 17, verse 17. And God had revealed himself and made him known and made him known so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. And so God had thus, had had thus uh, shown that he had finished his fulfilled his work and for the will of God. And it is even commanded in the book of Matthew chapter 28 that he had commanded in the name of Jesus that all would preach the gospel and perform signs and wonders in the name of Jesus to all those who believed. And they were commanded that they would and, he, and Jesus had pronounced that he would baptize in the Holy Spirit. And so all the disciples of Jesus would spread out and they would give baptism in their churches in the name of Jesus. They expressly commanded the commandment to baptize in the name of Jesus, to preach the name of Jesus and to rely on the name of Jesus. And so, you must consider if you are opposing the name of Jesus and you're rejecting the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the name of the Father. It is the name of the Son. And it is the name of the Holy Spirit. And so the name, the name of God that uh, Jesus had possessed, this very name has entered into the, the spirits of man. And we have received this in our spirits. It is through the Holy Spirit that you know, that you know the name of Jesus, that the name of Jesus abides in you and will be with you forever and in power. And so in the same way, the name of Jesus is the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. And He is God the Trinity. And so even the Father has a flesh, has a man's flesh. The Son has a, His own, His own willpower, His own, His own will. The Holy Spirit has his own will. Remember that Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Yet not as I will, but your will be done. Jesus had said, Not as I will, but as you will. He had said, and and again, uh, Yet not as I will, but as you will. You must, Jesus had given up his own desires and his, no, his own interests. And he had respected and he had respected and bowed down that the name of Jesus, the name that is higher above all other names. The Holy Spirit uh, does his intercession uh, in accordance with the will of the Father. And he helps us in accordance with the will of the Father. And so the Holy Spirit prays in loud cries and tears that cannot be expressed that cannot be expressed with words. 
and he had prayed to God and, and had interceded on behalf of man so that so that so that they um would follow the will of God. This has all been done for the sake of the saints. And and so God had ensured that this is the way that God would communicate with man. And so you must not think that you must ask whatever you want. You must not pursue whatever you want. None of these things. But to only the one who follows the will of the Father will God help such a person. You must not go outside of the will of God. If you go outside of the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit cannot help you. The Holy Spirit intercedes and prays uh, and prays to God on behalf of the will of God. The Son had denied His own will and the Holy Spirit had denied His own will because they are known that the, that, the, that the will of the Father is righteousness. And when Jesus had said, Abba, Father, and so Jesus, and so when He received the Spirit of the Son, it's, it is said, by this Spirit you call out Abba, Father. This is referring to only one who is in heaven. There is no one that has two fathers. So this refers to that one righteousness. And so righteousness is law. It can be said law. So what is the righteousness of this nation? It is the... It is the... The constitution. So the one who regards who regards and who recognizes the will of the Father is the most praiseworthy person. And the, the reason why they are so praiseworthy is that they had bent their own will to follow the will of the Father. And so it is the name of Jesus, which is the name of the Father. And He came to save us. The decision does not belong to the Son, but to the Father. And when Jesus had died on the cross, He said, Oh my, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, why have you uh, forsaken me? And so people only know here to only a very limited extent extent about the nature of the name of Jehovah and the name of Jesus. God has sent the only begotten Son who was in the bosom of the Father. And so it was that when the Son was in the bosom that the Father, the Father we understood has to have a plan, an eternal plan. There is only one will of the Father which whom everyone must follow. And so the Holy Spirit intercedes in accordance with the will of God. The Son, even the Son, prays to the Father in accordance with the will of God. The Holy Spirit does not do it by Himself. And yet we have received salvation. And so the name of Jesus refers to the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit, who is the Trinity. You have received baptism by immersion in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is the name that is, that is used in the, in the baptism of, of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus is the name of God the Trinity and not the angel of the name of Jehovah. If the name of Jehovah is the name of the God that appeared himself and manifested himself to Israel, this is not the, God, the name of God the Trinity. This is not the name of God the Trinity. You must proclaim this with all your strength. You must give your life into proclaiming this and testifying to this just like Stephen did. Consider whether you are threatened to die 
if you are when somebody tries to prevent you from speaking and testifying to the truth. There are so many who are like this who try to prevent the speaking and testimony of the truth. There are so many who oppose the testimony to the truth in this way, just like Stephen. Stephen had power. Stephen had power. He had great authority in his testimony, and yet there were those, the leaders, the leaders of the council, the elders who had greater uh, religious authority, they are the ones who had opposed the testimony of the name of the Trinity. And yet, and yet the God who had manifested himself uh, to, to the church who was in the desert, that is Israel, this was the God who had manifested himself and his name as the name to be remembered only to the people of Israel. The name, therefore, the name of Jesus is the name of God the Trinity, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. However, the name of the the name of Jehovah, this name that is only represented and that is remembered, this name is is it the name of God the Trinity? No. So the name of Jehovah is the name that is remembered, that is only commemorated, it is not the name of God the Trinity. You must be very sure, you must teach it and testify to the right and to the left, just like Stephen had done. You must open up your eyes so that you must see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So the name of Jehovah, the name that is commemorated only, this, this name of remembrance, this is not the name of God the Trinity. There is no other Christian church on this earth that speaks about this and with such great clarity. Only Stephen had, to, had, had taught and explained about this truth. The name of Jesus is the name of God the Trinity. So this is the difference right here. And so our Christian faith is faith in the Trinity. And we believe this as righteousness. And so righteousness refers righteousness that can be a righteousness of man. And so and so, religion also is the righteousness of man that one has uh, and what pursues and one gains by religion, by endless uh, cultivation, religious self-discipline. This is what you get, the righteousness of man. When you pursue your own righteousness, when you pursue your own merit and works, and yet, just like the criminals who had sit on the right and to the left of Jesus, they had no righteousness, no merit. They had only received and had welcomed the righteousness of Jesus. Not the way of religion that you must do this, you must do that, you must do this. No, this all leads in collecting your own righteous, your own righteousness. And so, salvation comes only by only the righteousness of God. And many will say on that day, just as it's written in the Bible, Lord, did you not perform many signs and wonders and perform prophesying in your name? And yet, uh, and yet, Jesus would reply because he spoke this word. I tell you, I never knew you. For only he who follows the will of God, only he is the one who will be accepted by me. There is only the righteousness of God, the merit of God, given by God. So what does the Bible say? Do not think it's strange when they persecute you and you suffer great trials. For this is this is the trials that I myself, I myself had endured as I was in obedience to the righteousness of God. The Son Himself had endured sufferings so that we would receive grace. This is our faith. 
What God had given us was faith, the faith that had come from God. This is what our faith is. So you, you will, uh, somebody will be asked, do you believe? And, and they will reluctantly say, yes, I believe. Some people, on the other hand, will artificially, artificially and with their own strength say, I believe, sure I believe, sure I believe. This is not what faith is. What faith is, is not by your own exertion or, or by your own, or by your own, um, by your own exerted imagination or by your own ideas. No, you did not do it by your own strength. You did not squeeze out your own imagination. This is not faith. What is the Christian faith? You do not just say artificially, oh, I believe, I believe. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, I believe. Yes, I really believe this time. I really believe this time. No, this is useless. This is all useless. This is not uh, what the Christian faith is. We believe in God. What had God given us? So, the will of God, the word of God. And this will of God, this word of God, this, this word of God became man and he had come to us. He came into the flesh. He became a man. And we have seen this man. We have heard him with our ears. We have seen him with our eyes. We have heard him with our ears. We have touched him with our hands. We have felt him. We have directly touched him with our hands. We have directly seen him with our eyes. We have directly heard him with our ears. We have done all these things directly. Does not the Bible clearly say this? It says in John, in 1 John chapter 1, that which we have seen, that which we have heard with our ears, that which we have, that we have behold directly, this we proclaim. There is an expression, objective, ob objectivity. Objectivity. This must be ensured. This must be examined. And this must be sure. And this must be the same wherever you examine it and whoever examines it at any time. This is what objectivity means. This is what objectivity means in its concept. So, so even science, even academic science, specific science, it is, it is to be uh, measured and it is to be ascertained in a very precise way at any time by any person at any time you want. This is what objective science is. And in the same way, our Christian faith, you have seen him, you have seen him with your eyes, you have heard him with your ears, you have touched him with your hands. This is the objective faith that we have. Anybody can ascertain this. And so, and so before Jesus, before Jesus had come up out of the waters, he was only known as the descendant of David, the descendant of Abraham. Yet, when he had come up out of the water, God had personally testified, this is my son, whom I love, with him I'm well pleased. And yet, they, many people had the misunderstood ideas why that, that the Son of God could come out in great glory directly out of heaven. But this is your own imagination, your own ideas. And yet, you must know that God had testified that this is my Son whom I love, with Him I am well pleased. We are those who have seen we are those who have seen. We are those who have seen with our eyes. We are those who have heard with our ears. We are those. We are those who are beheld with their own hands. If you do not know this, this objectively, you will perish. You will perish. This is the objective faith that we have and believe in. This is the most solid and certain faith. A fist is a fist. You must know this for sure, as it is uh, written in the Bible. 
You must check it and examine it. So the works that God had done, personally done, the Son had done this. He had shed His blood. He had torn His flesh. He had given us His torn blood and flesh. He had given us these things to us. And God still works through these works. You must know the Son of Man. What did Jesus say? Who do they say the Son of Man is? If you do not know who the Son of Man is, you will perish. You will go to hell. You will go to hell. The one who possessed the name of God, which is the name of Jesus, this is the one we believe in. He, this is the name of the triune God, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not the name of Jehovah, which was the name that was to be commemorated and to be represented. This, this name, the name in which the angel of Jehovah had manifested himself, this is not the name of the triune God. You must know this and believe this for sure. Let us all stand up now. So, who is it the God that you believe in? Consider who is the God that you believe in. The one who came to do the will of God. The one who came to do the eternal will of God. He had done this and he had persecuted. He had been persecuted. He had shed his blood as a result. And yet the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. According to the permission, the authorized permission given by God. He had been raised from the dead through the Holy Spirit. And we received, he had received glory from God. And we who believed him have received the Holy Spirit. Just as the Son of God had come to us. And we have believed him. Afterwards, the Holy Spirit must come to us. We must receive the Holy Spirit. The one who had come to the land of the Jews. This name that he had come with, this name must come into our souls through the Holy Spirit. And those who have received this name by the Holy Spirit have received the authority to become the child of God, the children of God. You cannot go beyond the working of the Holy Spirit. It is through the Holy Spirit we have received the name of God into our spirits. The word, the word spoken by the Holy Spirit and this word that proclaims the name of Jesus. This is the name we must believe in and hold to. Let us all pray that we be full of the Holy Spirit. Pray that you will be full of the Holy Spirit. Pray now. You must make the determination that you will be persecuted and martyred just like Stephen was. It is by the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus that you believe in and that you receive salvation and the righteousness of God. Let us all pray together. Let us pray honestly right now. Let us pray honestly. Pray with a loud and honest voice. Holy God the Father, in the past when the name of Jehovah was given and proclaimed to the people of Israel in the name of Jehovah, and yet in contrast, the name of the Lord, which is the name of the Father, and also the name of the Son, and also the name of the Holy Spirit, 
By this name we are protected, and we thank you for protecting us. You have saved us, and you have given us eternal life through this name. We pray that in this life, we pray that we may have this name as the pillar of our faith. We pray that our faith will not change, that this faith will not stumble. We pray that you'd walk in us by the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray earnestly. Amen. Now, I will now give the blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God the Father, and the working and fellowship of the Holy Spirit may be given to all those who have come to worship and to all those all those families of Sungwa Church and all those who hear this message in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. <laughs> to those who desire in obedience to the commandment to receive baptism by immersion, please come forward and the guides will guide you. Now let us all give glory to God out of great thanksgiving and give a round of applause to God. Thank you. Oh, Sangwak Saints.